Our lesson today is titled, The Courage to Use Your Words. Words are important. Jesus says we will be held accountable for every careless word. Perhaps we Christians need to listen more carefully to what the Word of God tells us about the use of words. Sergio Sintafonte from Vatican City Certainly, should we Christians better put into practice the Word of God, the tone of many public debates would change. For example, what would our comments and our reflections be like if we were to practice this word from St. Paul? Quote, No foul language should come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for needed edification, that it may impart grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting and reviling must be removed from you, along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God has forgiven you in Christ. Beginning with social media, as well as both new and old forms of media, websites and blogs, we Christians are not setting a very good example. Aside from legitimate confrontation, valid criticism and friendly irony, how many times do we see malicious and disproportionate accusations, mocking, derision, hurtful sarcasm and never-ending sl slander, which, in the end, remains mudslinging even after retractions. How would this style change if we were to adhere to the, the approach of the Apostle of the Gentiles? For the whole name is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. If you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. If we Christians were to practice the Word of God in our online posts, how would our way of communicating change? Would it perhaps not sell as much, since bad news has a larger audience and sells better. Once, just a few years ago, on a sports show, fans from opposing teams were quarrelling and insulting each other quite a bit. They had been directed to use foul and offensive language. All that was done just to sell the programme. The teams idolised by the fans had nothing to gain by it. Are all Christians truly interested in the church, this people made up of sinners, all of us whom God wants to save? Of course, even we Christians are not exempt from the sins of narcissism, self-aggrandizing, egocentry and vanity. Often the focus of our comments is ourselves, our words, not the word. As we increase, Jesus decreases. We become like the great Saint Paul who called out Saint Peter about his hypocrisy. We are all a bit like Saint Paul. We become saints like Catherine of Siena who wrote flaming letters to the Pope. She called him the sweet Christ on earth. We make ourselves judges based on the knowledge, competence and prestige which, which we possess. In order to accuse and condemn the church's shepherds, we make ourselves interpreters of visions and prophecies, decoding the mysteries of mystical visions. We make ourselves the Lord's special guests 
to redeem the church from its own opprobrium. We make ourselves great, and perhaps we merit Christ's outburst. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. How would the tone of our reflection change if we took into serious consideration this celebrated exhortation of St. Paul, even to the point about doing one another in showing honor? Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Bless those who persecute you. Bless, do not curse them. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. There are times when parhesia, that is, candid speech, is necessary, but it is without love. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or clutching symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and have all knowledge, but I have no love, I am nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. It is not pompous. Love is not inflated. It is not rude. Love does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. Love does not rejoice over wrongdoings, but rejoices with the truth. Love withstands all and never ends. Many wars have been waged in the name of truth, but since that is not enough, we continue with verbal violence. How would our language change if we listened to St. Peter? Sanctify Christ as Lord in your heart. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence. Being careful and regarding language is a theme that is insistently present in the Bible. Even in the Old Testament, there are a wealth of sources. Here, from the book of Proverbs, the babbling fool will be overthrown. Where words are many, sin is not wanting, but those who restrain their lips do well. The babble of some people is like a sword th thrusting, but the tongue of the wise is healing. Those who guard their mouths preserve themselves. Those who open wide their lips bring ruin. A mild answer turns back wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. A soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse one trees the spirit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who choose one shall eat its fruit. Do not answer fools according to their folly, lest you too become like them. From the book of Sirach, do not be called double-tongued and that with your tongue do not slander a neighbor. Do not quarrel with loud mouths or heap wood upon their fire. Loud mouths are feared in their city, and whoever is reckless in speech is hated. Before you are judged, examine yourself. The mind of fools is in their mouths, and the mouth of the wise is in their mind. When the godless curse their adversary, they really curse themselves. Do not accustom your mouth to coarse talk. Slanderers sully themselves and are hated by their neighbors. Those accustomed to using abusive language will never acquire discipline as long as they live. When we finish reading such texts, we say, the word of the Lord. Words are important. Jesus says they reveal what is in the heart. We will be held accountable for every single 
word we utter or write. For from the fullness of the heart the mouth speaks. A good person brings forth good out of the store of goodness, but an evil person brings forth evil out of a store of evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will render an account for every careless word they speak. By your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. When we easily condemn others, let's remember that Jesus was accused of blasphemy, of subverting tradition, of transgressing the law, even of demonic position. How would our words change if we were to listen to his word? Judge not, lest ye be judged, for with the judgment you pronounce you will be judged, and the measure with which you are measured will be used to you. Why do you see the wood that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the tree that is in your own eye? Not every one who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and do mighty works in your name? And then I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evil doers. The risk we Christians run is that of reading, listening, writing, and saying countless useless words, without listening any more to the word of God, without that silence which creates the climate in which we can listen to that one necessary word. Our words might seek to defend God, Jesus, Mary, the Pope, the church, teachings of Christ, but they are not Christian words. Without that silence, those who see evil will continue finding it even in the most beautiful things on earth. Even then, they will find some detail, some small defect, a small dark spot, in order to say that the whole thing is rotten. And they will convince many people that their view is true. We spend so much time in the midst of useless chatter, and we lose the power of the Word. For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. This leaves us with one question. Do we Christians have the courage to put the word of God into practice when it comes to how we use words?